today we're going to go over these Epoch 460 amp hour 12 volt batteries, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and these have the Victron comms. The Victron comms allow it to communicate with all this Victron stuff, but most importantly the Servo GX, and in this case I have the Touch 50 so that we can monitor all the information that, uh, that the battery can provide. The magic of the Victron comms is that if you don't have a battery of Victron comms, you need a shunt and then you have to spend a lot of time figuring out the settings for the shunt and how to get it set up, which uh, I spent a lot of time doing that and it's, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt and it takes, uh, takes some time to get it sorted correctly. But if you have a battery that has Victron comms, especially the V2 protocol, which is the, the latest and greatest, as soon as you plug this in to the servo and, and you enable the DVCC, it allows the battery to take over. And the battery now tells the Victron system and then via the Multi Plus 2 charger exactly what it wants and exactly what it wants to see. Uh, when it's going to charge, when it's going to stop charging, etc. So today we're just going to go over some very, very basic uh, instructions on how to hook this up one battery to the Victron system and then we'll do two batteries correctly to the Victron system so that it shows uh, all the parameters in the Victron system. So right here when you buy this you're going to get uh, and just before I get started I already have the cables hooked up, positive and neg negative cables all hooked up so I mean that's pretty simple it's the, the communication system that I want to uh, uh, get across to you today. So when you buy the battery, it's going to have these little remote on off buttons which hook up in the back. All right? These are great because you'll be able to mount these probably near where you have the uh, touch 50 screen. So you know you maybe have two buttons up here or something like that so you can turn each individual battery off one at a time. So you've got the on off buttons and then you've got this big harness so you get one harness there's one there there's one here one harness per battery the batteries have uh, or the harness has this power meter and a couple plugs all right a couple open plugs each one of these is the same this is what you would get you get one of these and one of these one of those and one of those so let's hook up one battery and make it appear so on this cable here and this harness you got basically three ends all right you've got this end that says inverter this end that says Victron uh, and then this end that doesn't say anything which is like a GM weather pack style plug all right now if you notice this one has a waterproof setup on it so clearly this goes on the IP67 waterproof case so we're just going to hook this up to the single battery first which goes in battery number one, we're going to call this battery number one, goes in the left port, okay? All right, now let's take a look and see what we got. We got our power meter on. All right, so let's put this up here. And get it to stay. And then we have the other end, which says inverter. Now that's going to go over here to the Servo GX labeled BMS can. It's a little bit deceiving so you'll see that, uh, let me get my pen to point, you'll see there's these plugs right here which are these top plugs which are just USB plugs. It's not those, it's these bottom ones. Now I have a terminator plug in here which you're supposed to use. I think it works without the terminator plug but it says you're supposed to use it. So it's going to be this port right here which is BMS can. So let me plug that in. Okay now look up here as soon as I plug that in says not connected instantly now the epoch i've named this intrigues the name of our boat so the epoch has showed up the uh inverter just powered up it says inverter on it, it did say low low battery before um and then there's some information on here now when you do this you want to enable the dvcc right here enable it let's go back uh, and that enables all this stuff to talk to each other. So let's go back again. Let's click on the Epoch. We will go to Details. 
So right now we have one online, zero offline. Installed available capacities, 460 amp hours. All right, so now we have one battery online and it will communicate with it, it will charge. So now that it's hooked up, the battery will communicate with the Servo GX, which will communicate with the Multi Plus 2. The battery will tell it what it wants for one battery. Now, let's just say 460 amp hours is not enough. You want 920, why wouldn't you want 920? So you have this other harness right here that came with this second battery, battery number two is what we're gonna call it. We don't need that for right now. You need to order this cable right here, which every time you order an additional battery, you're gonna need one of these cables, which is this part number right here. B12460A H05-4505. All right, and again, you have a waterproof connector. That's always a clue and an indication that it's going to go on our waterproof battery. I'm, I'm just not using it right now. Uh, not using the waterproof connector. So we're just sliding it in and letting it connect. Now, to, to connect this to the string, you're not actually using any more comm cables. You're going to take the existing weather pack connector that came on the first harness. One's female, one's male. So let's connect these together. All right. Let's give it a second here. Now let's look over here. It takes a second to recognize it, so we'll give it a second. Let's click on the Epoch battery now. We're going to click on details. Oh, what do we got? We got two online. And 900 and... Actually, we have 940 amp hours available of 920. Um, it's not unusual on Epoch batteries to see... A higher rating than what they advertise as as a matter of fact I know that it's even more than 940 because I did some deep discharges on this the other day and uh, it was reading 0% state of charge and it was still going so I know that, that there is more than 940 amp hours which is not unusual because uh, they're quality cells now let's look at parameters now we have 300 amp discharge um, charge current limit 440 amp discharge current limit which is going to be perfect because I have a 400 amp class T fuse which I will be using and then I'll be using these uh, Blue C's MBRF or MRBF fuses which actually get mounted right to here so we'll be fusing them at the cables and then we'll be fusing them down the line for a class T fuse once it comes out of the, uh, the links now the other part of this, this is the physical hookup, but the second part of this is right here. So on this drawing that I drew, we have battery two, end of pack, battery one, host. These are the dip switch settings. So we'll just hold this on here for a second. You can pause it and then read the notes and see the dip switches. And then up here, you can see that that matches what we have. So here we have battery one, host, and way up here, on the dip switches right here you can see battery one those are the dip switch settings all right that's good and then go back to battery two right here end of pack and up here you can see the dip switch settings on that one which matches my drawing I'm just showing you that that's actually how we have them we got a visitor <laughs> hey buddy sorry I know, I know. <laughs> so, uh, and one thing, I have this blocked off right here. Only just to simplify it. This is this open hole right here that's not used, so let's take this off. Uh, if you want your meter to be used on your second battery, like if you're going to put these up there as a quick reference, you just have to plug in that other one and then your meter will be operational these other ends uh, wherever they are here are not used so the only reason why you're going to use this port and this uh, second harness is if you want your meter um, all right one other thing to cover I just got these in whoops I just got these in and these are the mounts and these mount to the side you can see right here they go in those holes 
and Epoch thinks of everything. They're so well engineered. I mean, I'm a mechanic of 40 years or so, and it seems like engineers always screw us mechanics. But you can see, look at it from this side. You can see that this hole, on a regular engineer would put this hole right here so that this bolt blocks this bolt and this bolt blocks that bolt. Now they offset it a little bit so you can always get to either bolt. Just little little details like that that uh, that I always notice Epoch doing. They're, you know, very, very well engineered. So, um, I really can't think of anything else right now. Did you want to show this? Yeah, so you have your manual and it goes over the dip switches here. Dip switches are a little bit of a pain in the ass. You know, on indicates zero, off indicates one, one, one indicates the host. So it's a little bit of a pain, so I just drew them out for what you actually need right here on this. And so you can just see this is A, this is B, this is C, and then these are all down, these are all down. But these positions are a little bit different. So that's it. And uh, so that makes it work. And they are both showing, and they're both connected and uh, communicating. It's all perfect, so it's all working. Now I can dismantle this on the bench uh, and put it in the boat. One other thing I need to cover is that when you first get these batteries or those batteries over there, the 300 amp hour, uh, and you have them hooked up to your uh, Servo GX, the first charge cycle, you're probably going to get some uh, cell imbalance warnings, a few other things. Don't worry about it. Just bring them up and then uh, discharge them again, bring them up again, maybe do that two or three times total, and uh, those, those uh, warnings uh, will go away. Uh, I, I did a very deep discharge. As a matter of fact, I did a discharge all the way down to zero, pulling 150 amps. Uh, and then charged it from zero to 100% with 75 amps because I only have 15 amps coming out of the wall. But uh, and then all those codes went away, and then they operate smoothly. And come to find out, when you're using Victron comms with either Pylon Tech or just about any battery that has Victron comms, that's not unusual on the first charge. So this uh, uh, don't worry about uh, those codes on the initial charge. So I think that's it. Very happy with these batteries. Fantastic. That little space right there, you know, about 180 pounds worth of batteries uh, equals a tremendous amount of lead acid. Golf cart style batteries or 8D batteries, whatever. It is a lot of power. So, can't wait to get these in the boat and uh, should work very, very well. Very happy with them. All right, make sure you like and subscribe if you uh, want to see me continue this project and install this stuff in the boat because I have a lot of wiring to do, a lot of wire running and figuring out where I'm going to put these in spaces in the boat. So that'll be interesting. So like and subscribe and uh, follow along if you want to watch us do all that work. So, all right, have a good one.